Fifth grade Go Math, Chapter 4, Lesson 5. How can the strategy Draw a Diagram help you solve a decimal multiplication problem? And just as a reminder, a diagram is another word for a picture. Unlock the problem. A group of friends go to a local fair. Jason spends $3.75. Maya spends three times as much as Jason. Tia spends $5.25 more than Maya. How much does Tia spend? Um, squiggle underline what you're ultimately at being asked to find, and then circle the important information and underline any clue words as to what operations you will be doing. Now they say use the graphic organizer below to help you solve the problem. And what we do here is breaking apart the word problem and we're gonna be doing the same thing, just rewriting them down here in the graphic organizer. Um, so what do I need to find? Well, we really need to find how much does Tia spend. Next, I need to know what information do I need to use? And I circled three different bits of information. Um, and that's because this is kind of like a chain reaction problem. I'm starting with one person's amount. And I have to do something to that um, to find a different person's amount. And then I have to do something to that other one to find the last person's amount. And so I need to use the amount spent by... Who do we actually know how much they spent? Um, well, we're told what Jason spends. So we need to use his amount. And I'm also going to write down what he spent, which was $3.75, um, to find the amount spent by who. Who We can find that by looking again. The next sentence was, Maya spends three times as much as Jason. So the next person we're going to be looking for is we're going to be looking for Maya's amount. And then based on Maya's amount, um, what do we do to that? Then we um, are adding it to find Tia's amount. And so that's the information that we're going to start with. And then the last thing that it says is how am I going to use that information? I'm going to draw a diagram to show how much each person spent. And all of this is important because how much Tia spent at the fair, which is what we're being asked, is dependent upon us knowing how much Jason and Maya spent. And so now to actually solve the problem. The amount of money Maya and Tia spend depends on the amount Jason spends. So draw a diagram to compare the amounts without calculating. So they don't want you to do any work right now. They want you to draw the picture. Then we're going to use the diagram to find out the amount that each person spent. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to um, draw a box. And they did that for you. Um, for Jason, okay? And how much did Jason spend? He spent $3.75. So this box is worth $3.75. The next step is to figure out Maya. Now Maya was three times the amount of Jason. And so this box has become $3.75. Every box, this shape, um, is going to have that. Now, Maya was three times that. So I'm going to do three boxes, and each box is worth $3.75. So I'm writing in $3.75 for each of these boxes. And they need to be um, fairly similar in size so that you get a realistic look at comparing them. 
Now, right now, we're only working on boxes. So now we're going to look at Tia. And we knew that Tia was whatever Maya um, spent plus an additional $5.25. So I'm going to do that right here. Okay. And so we need to draw the same amount of boxes as Maya. So it's the exact same as Maya right here. And each of these boxes is $3.75 as well because it was the same as Maya. And we have all of those. And then there's an additional box for Tia that was $5.25. So now that I have my diagram, because that's what these boxes are, this is my diagram, I can write it out my actual problems. So Jason, there was no operations or equation to figure it out. He's just $3.75. Maya is three groups of $3.75. So solve that. So Maya spent $11.25. So now we can figure out our actual answer of Tia. We take $11.25 and then add $5.25 to that. So your final answer to be written at the bottom is $16.50. Now we're going to try another problem. Julie's savings account has a balance of $57.85 in January. By March, her balance is four times as much as her January balance. Between March and November, Julie deposits a total of $78.45. If she does not withdraw any money from her account, what should Julie's balance be in November? Squiggle underline what you're being asked to find, circle the important numbers, and underline any other words that will help you know what operations that you need to do. You should have um, squiggle underlined what is Julie's balance in November, and that's what you'll fill in right here of what you need to find. So go ahead and do that. What information do you need to use and the important um, information? Well, um, this is where I'm going to make a list that will help me with my diagram. The first information that I circled was um, her starting balance of $57.85 in January. So I need to use that. The next piece of information was four times as much as January is in March. And times I underlined because that's a clue word. Um, times, it's going to be multiplication. So I'm going to write down March. And how do I figure out the March balance? It is four times um, the January amount. And then the last piece that I circled was deposits uh, $78.45. And deposits is going to be telling me to add um, the $78.45. So there I have the information broken down just in um, a list. And now how am I going to use this information? I'm going to create a diagram. So now I need to actually draw my diagram or my pictures. Um, I always start with the amount that I actually know, and that's going to be January. And so again, I'm just going to write January here. And I'm going to draw one box, not too big, not too small, just a regular size. And this box is 50, worth $57.85. Now all my other boxes that I draw need to be the same size. So the next step is my March. Um, so I need to draw at least one box to get my size. And then how many times of the January is it? It's four times. So I need to have four boxes. And they need to be touching because I'm kind of creating a bar graph or something similar that makes it easier to compare. And again, each of these boxes is worth 
and 85 cents because it's four times the January amount. And so I have my four boxes all filled in. And then my last one is my November. Um, at the end of November, there has been $78.45 added to what was in March. So that means that up to that point, my November boxes, they should all end right there. So I can kind of do that to divide my boxes. And that'll give me four boxes the exact same length, each of them being worth $57.85. But now I need to have an additional box added and have that be $78.45. So now that I have my diagram, I can actually solve it. So January, we know what it is. Um, March, I need to figure out what March is because November and March have the same amount at some at one point. So I'm going to take the $57.85 and I'm going to multiply it times how many? I'm going to multiply it times 4. So go ahead and do that. You should have ended up with $231.40. And now, since they're the same up to that point, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my March total, $231.40, and then add uh, the $78.45. So go ahead and do that as well. And if you did your computa computation all correctly, you should end up with a grand total of $309.85 in November. Don't forget your dollar sign because that's your label. And then just looking at your question, how your diagram helps you determine if your answer is reasonable. You can see each piece and so you can tell if you make a mistake or how they should be in comparison to each other with amounts. We know November should be more than the others. Um, you don't need to write a sentence for that. Due to time on the Sharon Show, I will not be able to walk through each individual problem. So go ahead on number one, definitely follow the directions. It tells you step by step what to do and draw your diagram in this box. Problem number two will use a variation of this diagram in the box. And then three and four, you'll show your work in this area over here. Manuel's amount. Jerome's amount. Cindy's amounts based on Jerome's total. I added them together and then it's two times that. So Cindy collects... $126.50 and make sure that we can see your decimal. For number two, there's my diagram for Jerome's new amount and Cindy's would still be two times that. So $108.82. For number three, you have $5.15 for one hour the same price, $5.15 for each hour up to five hour, and then, then every hour after that is $3.75. Draw your diagram. For six hours, it should be equal in length up to the five hour point, which is $25.75, and then the sixth hour changes to $3.75, so I add those together to get my final answer of $29.50. And number four, Jen is $24.99. Karen is $24.99 plus an additional $3.50. Vicki is what Karen was, $28.49, but twice. And that gives me my final answer of... $56.98.